Thanks. How did you get the gig with Snarky Puppy? Okay, so um, we're talking about learning songs very quickly. So there's a venue. I don't know if you've been to Toronto much. Yeah, yeah. okay. So the venue downtown Toronto called The Rex. Yep. Okay, so Snarky had a gig there, and um, I also played with an amazing bassist named Rich Brown. Okay. Um, we have a duo together. He plays in my band. I play in two of his projects. Nice. And the project at the time was called Rinse the Algorithm. And so Rinse, we had a show like once, like the last Saturday of every month. That just happened to be when Snarky was showing up. So Snarky did the 930, and then we did the after midnight. Oh, okay. Right? So they were there. It was two nights they did, showed up. When they were done, we invited the band up after our set to just play Teen Town. Right, jam it out. Had a good time. I went back to the show next day just to chill and meet Sput. Short story, I just completely fanned out on Sput because <laughs> for me, growing up on God's property, growing up on like so many of these records, you know, yeah. Tony Out the Box, Kim Burrell Live in Concert, um, you know, and a, a bunch of other records as well. Finally getting a chance to meet Sput and talk to him in real time. Oh, yeah. And just say... You have no, you have no idea how much of an impact you made on my life, and and to see him in person was just incredible. And so, you know, he's really gracious, allowed me to use whatever of his drum kit. Yeah. And so I saw them the next day. They said, "Hey, you want to sit in?" I was like, "Sure." Do you know any of our songs? Not really to like play it. Okay, we'll teach you one. So Mike, over the span of about a minute, explained the form of intelligent design and it went kind of something like this he's like okay there's an intro the bass is playing these upbeats you know with chords um it's like a drum and bass thing we go to like a brazilian type slow thing in the bridge or chorus section we pivot between the two of those a couple of solos we'll hand it over to you for the drum solo right yeah start soft explode you can bring it back down because we're going to go right back to the head again really quietly um eventually we'll go back to that brazilian feel thing then we're going to be really soft, go back to the main theme, ride that out, and then just like cut it off and allow the bass just to fade out with that particular upbeat pattern. Like, you got it? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll call you up. And so a couple and songs. And this is for you to sit on Sput's kit, not mm -hmm. double drums. No, no, no. You sitting in on Sput's kit. Me by myself. Got it. Right? So the keys for that were, one, retaining that information. Right. Two, um looking at people in the eye yeah right being in the moment yeah. and watching the cues seeing okay they're kind of motioning something's about to happen um and then other you know physical cues like okay this they're like relaxed okay we gotta you know pull it back a little bit or just and that was the biggest thing sput told me after the fact he said you know just the way that you follow the cues way you're looking at body language the way your eyes up and just seeing what's happening and scanning the stage that is a big part of your success with this amazing band, so yeah. And then, then they would just come back to town. I would come and hang, you know, they would throw a couple songs at me on stage. And so I'd go back and learn the, you know, the records just in case they called something I didn't really know that well. And then Sput needed a sub in Toronto. There it is. Yeah. And yeah. that happened maybe about a year later. And in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Coincidental. Totally worked out. Right. Yeah. Um, what was cool about that was I think I had to learn maybe like 22 songs in about five days. So I did a list. Snarky puppy songs. Right, at that. <laughs> so I actually put yeah. myself on a listening schedule. So I did, of the first four days, three days, I did five songs each day. And then the last day I did seven. And then on the fifth day, I did a test. So I had to look at the set list. You're such an academic. I oh know. Oh, my God. That's so amazing. I looked, I, looked at the, I looked at the list of songs. I had to be able to sing the intros, outros, melodies, bass lines, chord riffs, and any special shots just by looking at the name on the song, on the list. And the rehearsal was me doing exactly that, sitting wow. with Michael. Yeah. You know, we didn't actually rehearse. We just sat and he's like, okay, this tune, this tune, this tune. And I also cross-referenced with live footage that people were posting on YouTube, right? So between the YouTube. You did your the, homework. Oh, man. Wow. that's But that's the biggest thing for me, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, we're talking about bandwidth yeah. and being in the moment. Bandwidth to me means like, can I handle, you know, how much can I handle? And I think if I'm doing that much homework, 
consistently, I can continue to handle that kind of information. Yeah. Because your mind is strong. You're moving with it. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's so so then you did it. You did that show and Michael was like, and we're talking about Michael League, who is yeah. the founder of Snarky Puppy. Michael was like, do more shows with us? Or did Sput need, like, how? when did it become, like, your gig? Yeah, so basically I did maybe two more concerts with them. I think there was like something in Montreal was the first out of Toronto thing I did. Then we came back to Toronto for something else. And they said, okay, we're going to book you for... I think it was like 2013, October, mm -hmm. right? October 31st Yeah, in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, right? Nice. That was the first tour date. Nice. However, what happened was, and I wasn't like a member of the band. I was just kind of subbing in because like, you know, the fam the core crew is like 20 some odd, but the family is like 40. Right. Right. So they, I get a call. Hey, can you fly out like now? To Europe, we got a recording, and that was "We Like It Here." That's how it happened. So once I did the recording session, Mike was like, "You're in the family." Yeah, yeah. I don't care what you say. You're in the family. I was like, "Okay, cool. This is, I'm, I'm down with the, being in the family. That I like the family. The family. Yeah, the <laughs> it's family. A good family. I it's like the family. It's cool." So, um, you know, and then the <laughs> relationship just continued to grow from there. That's so cool. Yeah. And you did that same thing on the flight. You learned those songs. Mm -hmm. What were you learning? Because there wasn't drums on it, right? Or were yeah. there demo program drums? Or was yeah. it like... Yeah, so it's like, it's demo demo stuff. Um, there was demo stuff. There was them actually playing in real time, depending on what it was. Um, but I was just learning bass lines, chords, melodies, you Very know? Cool. And then they had, you know, specific things. Like when I got in... Mike said, okay, this one is more metallic. Yeah. So think symbols, think, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. This one is more this. This one's more that. And just kind of had to attach any thoughts that I had or groups that I had. And we did a four hour rehearsal before actually hitting. Wow. Yeah. It was Which a long like, day. Yeah, it's a long day. But at the same time, a four hour rehearsal in order to do a tracking session with <laughs> Snarky Puppy is not that long. A single f half day of. Yeah. Rehearsing, yeah. And I got stuck at the airport. I couldn't oh. find my driver that oh we had. God. So, And when I landed, there was another song in my inbox, which was The Sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> and you had this one? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's amazing. 